So today we introduce a book series on a great little book called The Richest Man in Babylon. It was written in the 1920s, and it's a book that offers through parables about the ancient city of Babylon and characters in that city some sound spiritual wisdom about finances. We're going to study these parables on and off for the next few weeks. And, and, and I invite everyone to recognize the timeless wisdom of somebody from the 1920s writing over 80 years ago and how relevant they are for our life today. I want to tell you that, that, that Babylon, Babylon was a rich country historically. That, that, that the interesting part, though, is there was a great disparity between the rich and the poor in that country. So we meet Bansir. Bansir is a chariot builder. One day he's sitting at work in his yard and he's got this unfinished chariot. But he's sitting there and, and, and he's looking over this unfinished work, just dreaming and daydreaming, I guess is what we would call it, and thinking. And he's sitting there wondering, why do I work so hard all the time, but I'm so poor? You know, it reminds me of somebody hung out a pool, but that's another sermon. All right, and so his friend Kabi walks up, and Kabi's a musician, and he wanders up. And I can imagine how he's wandering up, because what he wants to do is borrow money from Bansir. And so he probably wandered up, made a little small talk, and said, hey man, I need two shekels. Can, you know, can I hold two shekels? And, and, and Bansir replies, I don't have any money. If I had two shekels, it would be my entire life savings I would be loaning you. But I don't have it. And this, this actually shocked the musician, Kavi. The reason he was so shocked is he assumed his friend Bansir must, must just have plenty of money because in the middle of the workday he's just sitting there daydreaming while the unfinished chariot, you know, is just sitting, not, having no work done on it. And, and I don't know if you can relate sometimes where you just want to step out of reality, you know, and, and just enter into your mind and, and dream of a better day. You know, and what do we know about a dream? Well, one thing I know for sure that's universal is dreams always hope for more. That wherever we are, wherever we're dreaming, inherently, the idea behind a dream, the vision, the goal, involves expansion of consciousness, expansion of love, expansion of money, expansion of a relationship, expansion of some good thing. How do I know that? Because if it wasn't an expansion of some good thing, then we call them nightmares. We don't call them dreams. Inherently, a dream means more of God, I would say today. And, and we know the Bible, it's full of dreamers. You know, the Bible, there's Jacob, there's Daniel, there's Joseph. Today, I want to talk about Jacob. Jacob's running from his twin brother. You know, and running from, you know, the other side of himself. Have you ever ran from yourself? Anybody? Is anybody here today? Yeah. All right, all right. I, I, this is a participation Sunday. Please. And, and so, Jay, have you ever ran from yourself when a dream shows up? Okay, a dream shows up. And so Jacob's running from his twin brother, his half of himself. And he's leaving Beersheba, and he's headed toward Haran. And, and he gets to this certain spot, and the sun goes down. And he needs to rest. So he takes a stone to put under his head, and he lays there to sleep. This is from the 28th chapter of Genesis. And while he's sleeping, we all know what happened. He has a dream in which he sees a stairway or a ladder resting on earth. And the, and the ladder reaches all the way to heaven, and he sees angels of God ascending and descending up and down this ladder. Now, now you can imagine that dream, and there's metaphysics behind it. Metaphysics meaning beyond the physical, beyond the picture of a ladder on the ground reaching all the way up to the sky. It represents our consciousness and the journey 
that we travel in consciousness. Metaphysically, Jacob, since he's a twin, he represents half of the mind. The mental part, while his brother Esau represents the animal instinctual part. See, every one of us has an instinctual part and an intellectual part. And many times we default by instinct. You know, that's when you wake up and you're like, how did I create this life? Because I didn't think about the steps I was taking. We create everything one way or another. Through awareness or through unconscious awareness. We create everything. And so, so Jacob represents this mental part, this aware part, this conscious part of our mind. And he's moving toward Haran, and that's important because Haran is a higher place. And so in our dreams, when we let down our guard, we always have this opportunity to move to a higher place in our mind. And so when he moves to this higher place, He's inviting a higher state of awareness. Remember, I told you he was running from his brother. And so running is panic mode. When we dream, we're in conscious mode. You know, we allow, there's no limit in a dream. There's no obstacle in a dream. Nothing ever says you can't in a dream. It's only that intellectual Jacob quality in our mind that on the human side shuts us down. And so he's in this place somewhere between the low state of panic and the high understanding or the high ideas of Haran. And there's a ladder, a ladder between the two. And this ladder in the scripture represents step by step realizations of truth. It's that it represents, you know, the, the outpouring of spirit in our life, step by step by step. Why do I say that? Because try today, you know, running up a ladder and skipping four or five rungs at a time. It does not work. In fact, the higher you get on the ladder, I guarantee the tighter you'll be gripping. Step by step. Just try, you know, running up a ladder, skipping a few rungs when you're, you're two, three stories up. You know I don't want you to try that, right? <laughs> right, right? You know that was rhetoric, right? Rhetorical. Don't go and say, my reverend told me to you know, run up a ladder. <laughs> Delete that from the CD, Lou. All right, so, so this ladder represents something that we all travel in our journey on a dream. Because in a dream, we, like the character, are faced with the reality of our day. And the dream is not the reality of our day. And there is something in our mind that either carries us on the steps to that dream or repels it. You see, the thoughts in our mind, they're the angels of God descending and ascending in consciousness. God is always, as I understand God, sending us higher ideas. 